I will pick up the story from this morning from Jakimo, who was talking about urn fields and cremations in uh, southern Europe. And he mentioned already, moving up to the north, it's getting a bit more complicated. Uh, once we plugged in, yeah. the right. Okay, just a map of Belgium. For one part, you see our language border, but there's also a soil border, but here mostly uh, in Flanders, uh, sandy soil. This is the French speaking part, and here we have a mountainous area with caves. We are situated here along English Channel and the North Sea coast, and traditional theories this is an area in the early and middle Bronze Age known from uh, barrows. And once you move into the late Bronze Age, traditionally around 1100 BC, you have the appearance of urban cemeteries and uh, flat graves and the dominance of cremations. You will see in this the story that is a bit more complicated in that respect. What you see here is the central, the scale basin that is covering central Belgium, and this is mostly my working area. The black dots are urnfield cemeteries with a, a research tradition since late 18th, early 19th century to now. The red ones are the ones who are radiocarbon dated. It's only a limited sample of what we have here, but all the excavations you don't help always preservation of the bones. So we have to work with what is reserved and also finance limit and radio carbon dating. We have two potential biases when we're talking about changes from animation to cremation. The circle structures you here see are in Sandy Flanders and also mostly in Belgium also what is an aerial photography project of the university and are mostly gone. They are eroded so the, the primary burrows sometimes on the, on the surface and also secondary burrows into the burial mounds are mostly gone. We know that they exist from all excavations in wooded areas in the 19th century, but this is the most part of the information we get. The other pro problem, especially for inhumations, is soil acidity in the sandy region. What you see here are the remnants of completely uh, of rest from an inhumation burial. The bone has completely disintegrated due to chemical processes. It's only coral, uh, the color is uh, uh, yeah, a shadow. And this is early medieval period cemetery. So if you take 2,000 more years, take into account soul process, we don't almost see nothing of animation anymore. But we know from all the excavations and from information and evidence that they exist. Cremations, we follow kind of the typology because the, the, the position in the cremation grave is the final phase of a whole funeral ritual of when you only can date, of, you can only understood the last phase when after the cremation, you have the cremation uh, remains, and then you have choices to make. People make choices, even in the same cemetery. You can leave and deposit them at location, putting a, a barrel on top of it, and sometimes even selection of bone. But the most flat, uh, this is typically for early Iron Age uh, small barrows. Mostly what we found in the flat place and the urn fields is this deposition at another location. There is a complete selection from the bone, put in a container that can be an urn, that can be just a pit or a ditch. You have also, there's no selection, also remains, uh, charcoal fragments, uh, fragments from pottery are collected together. Again, you can put them in an urn of a pit and then you have a combination of the two. I'll show you some examples afterwards and also for dating. These are the types you have A, B and mix A, B are the urn grade, the classical urn grade. From there and earth with them, you see they are dominating. The one are C, D, and E are the types you will see now, and these are the ones without the urn, and that was one of the main problems we have in comparison with Central European urn fields, almost no grave goods. These were almost not datable because you only a packet of bone. So that's what makes it com uh, makes it complicated. If we're going to look now to the urns, you have the pure classical urn grave, where you have only a selection of cremated bone, put into an urn, into this, and the best case, you had type of chronology working, using this as a way of dating your cemetery. Traditionally, we believed <coughs> cremation cemeteries start around 1100 BC. What you see here are the oldest cremation dates we have from these urn graves that we have been collected, and all the ones being on the map are before 2900 BC. Afterwards, they are dominating. This is middle, we know already the dates classically from the Middle Bronze Age, some, uh, even until early Iron Age period. 
the oldest graves start already in flat graves around 1400, like you see here, and there is an evolution. And once you get here in this period, they are really dominant, and then you have a lot of information, you have tens of dating about these cemeteries. If we're going to look to the other type, this is also an urn grave, but without this selection. So we have bone and charcoal fragments put into the urn, but also distributed around. You see here, even a small fragment of bone next to it. There's also another type, but here we have said we could still use the urns as a way of dating. The oldest results we have for this type in urnfield cemeteries again, we are even moving up around the period 1600, uh, 1500 BC with a few, and this coming from one, one of the cemeteries, and then you have this slow evolution until here, and then you have the most of the dates, and then you're in a real urnfield period with a lot of dates on this type of graves. And then you have the difficult one, the what, there is no real term if you translate from the German Glockelader of what the French use, the block d'ossement, in English it's a bone pack grave. In fact, a selection of bones put into an organic container, piece of cloth, there are some examples that you probably probably think that maybe it was even a wooden box because they're really in a wooden box. With this, this was the one mostly without grave, so you cannot date them. Now we have radiocarbon dates available for them. And we had some interesting results moving up already also to 1500 BC. Again, here this place, the cemetery <coughs> called Bliki, it seems to be one, the oldest until, but with the information available, the oldest real urn field that starts is a lot older than the tradition, traditional way of thinking. And this is slow evolution. And interesting is also in this group of urn fields, uh, type C, this blown, that we have dated urn fields, the youngest ones are coming from this cemetery of Jasper and this cemetery will disappear again, but they seem to be appearing slowly everywhere from, 15, from around 1500 BC into the funeral records of the different urn fields that we have been dating. This is something what we call cremation type decibel because it was the first time recognized at the cemetery. It's a mixture of two. You see there is a selection of bone and it has been covered by a packet of, the, of cremation remains also most from the pyre. And this is a typical ritual that we see. It was only recognized first in decibel but re-evaluating and with new excavations, you see it's more present. I think for the moment we have about 28, uh, I'm correct, 28 in Belgium, but there are more in France. And here we had something quite interesting, the Dasselbergen Cemetery again, with this type appearing from the early Iron Age, with the problem of the Hallstatt Plateau and radiocarbon dating, a bit the same date as the, this, these bone bed graves. And what quite interesting was this, what we call the Campine region. This is the eastern part of Flanders, and there a lot older. They start already between 1500-1400 BC and are slowly appearing also into the Arctic Red Cross. But these are seems that be in eastern Flanders, what we have now, seems to be older than the one in this western part of the, of the Flanders region. This is done the German type Brandrugen grape and it's small round grapes with the packet cremation remains in, there is not even a selection. If you start counting how many grams of bone you have, you never have sometimes 100, maybe less, maybe 200, but they just didn't even select all the bones. It seems not to be necessary within the ritual. And also here, Earthfields, the dates we have from this time, from the Earthfield period, already again this date, 1500 BC, when we start and slow waiting. And here is one in, another interesting date, one is younger than the normal urnfield. We expect urnfields to start around 500 in the 5th century, the traditional idea. Here we have a younger one. And then the last surprise that we had recently during excavation of a new cemetery, the luckily to the attention of the archaeologists, it's very strange. You have a shallow pit, not much, and small fragments of bone dispersed everywhere. There's only, I had it in only one cemetery with four types, and we could date two of them. And these seems to be the oldest flat, cremated flat graves we have, with bones going up to 800, 600 BC, all than the rest. Last week, a uh, Dutch colleague told me that probably they have the same in the Netherlands. But I know only for four examples, and we could only date two of them. 
This seems to be when you start with cremated flat graves that we see earlier, the earliest one of these types. When we go now to C14 dating and what we know of cremated remains, we start already with a long example of a cremated grave in a place called Kersat and with an old date, and you see here it covers the third millennium, but it's a classical uh, bell beaker grave. We have another problem that in this region in, in Flanders, we have a few pits with presence of beakers that we think that probably are inhumation graves, but there's absolutely no trace of bone. Even looking into the soil, we don't see any trace, and we think going with due to soil process that the bone and even the, the shadow of the bone has completely disappeared. We have it also, this process going on with other uh, aerial photography features. We think that that you have in Bell Beaker period, late Neolithic, already a few, one example of cremation, the other one we believe are inhumations, but we cannot really prove it. It's an assumption based on some other things. The Barrow periods, there are some, the, the, the PhD from a colleague of mine, how do we date these barrows? Because we don't have the monuments. We are using the, the, the ring ditches, and you take the lowest layer, resampling charcoal over there, because this is the one that's close to the construction phase of it. And you see there is an old one, this is an old date. There are some early, uh, late, late Neolithic, but especially between 1800 until, 40, uh, until 1500 BC, you have really the construction phase of these barrel monuments. Mm -hmm. We have dates compared to the Netherlands, France, and England, and they see in this period between 1800 1500 BC is really the main period of things. Luckily, in some of these barrows, we could see that they have been reused and a new ditch had been dug out, and we could date uh, these ditches, their, find their phase also, and these seem to be younger. These seem to date from 1500 BC until 1200 BC. This reuse is a most barrows are dated then and they are reused again, but we see also in the Netherlands, and we could date some of the use phases and they date after 1500, 1500 BC. We had, lastly, in, uh, a recent excavation, and we had one secondary cremation being preserved because it was dug out quite deep here in this monument with a late Neolithic. <coughs> this is Cremated bone, charcoal sample, and the combination of two gates are quite early, 1800, 1600 BC. But this is for the moment the only secondary grave in the Barrow Mount that we have, were able to date. And it's not central, so it must, compared with, uh, with, uh, with other excavations, it must be secondary cremation of these reuse phases of these barrows. There are all the uh, information <coughs> about the secondary burn, but all excavations, material is out, not always preserved, so you cannot date them. We're going now to the Urnfield cemeteries and flat graves. In blue, you see the radiocarbon dated cremation graves. The most of them is, is 929 cemetery. In red, you have the number of uh, cremations that have not been dated. We are limited financial resources, uh, quality of, of sampling of cremated bone, but it's typically for our region is the Mason cemeteries will never have more than 200 graves, even if they occupy a long period in comparison to Central Europe. And most of them tend to be smaller than 50 graves. And an interesting feature that we're seeing now is this here, isolated cremations appearing in very small cemeteries. So the old idea of large earthen cemeteries, we have to revise this again. And this is something that is, is a new phenomenon that we, that we see appearing. This is a map with all the sites region carpet dated. Most of them here are in this region, and then you have in the French part, the red ones are caves where we have inhumated bones or non-cremated bones. I'll explain it later. What I put on was the first date of occupation, and it seems there is a lot of variety. It has sites starting into what we classically say Middle Bronze Age from 15 BC. Some sites here are dating only to the early Iron Age, so there's a lot of difference when we see now using uh, radiocarbon carbon dates and the appearance of Urnfield cemeteries and the occupation phase. I will let you see in uh, three uh, case studies. Traditionally, we were thinking Earth will start and occupied by a same family or two families for a long period. It becomes more complicated when you see this. This is Wenerham Lixat, where we have these two old dates. The different colors are different types of grave. Even here, there is no real selection 
in the cemetery. There are a few monuments and in about 29 MK, but the different type of depositing cremated bones is used during different periods in the same in the same cemetery. These are the radio carbon dates we have. 29 cremations and 21 of them have been dated. And to our surprise, we had two early dates going back to the 18th, 16th century. And these are the two dates that are so-called type G grave, the grave with only a few limited, uh, a few selection of bones. Then there is a gap, and what around the 14th, 13th century, what see we see now as the beginning of earth tradition, also in our region, we have. Two, two graves that we could be dates that belong to this period also. And then we have the real start of the main occupation phase of the Earnfield Cemetery starting here, and it starts in the 9th century uh, uh, BC. That means at the end of the late Earnfield. Okay. And then you have a whole occupation until the, in the early Iron Age with the Hausa Plateau, but according to the Oxcal model, it seems mostly fit into the early phase of this uh, early Iron Age. This is one of, then there is a gap, and then there's the other surprise that we have, and that's something new also. You see that these Earnfield cemeteries are even used in late, in late Iron Age. This is going mostly the third, second century BC. Another one to settle the uh, Engsbergen. In red are the dated graves. We have the so-called uh, Langebet Langrab in Germany. One small barrel with one grave here that is quite important. These are the results of the dated graves. You could only have 12 dates depending on the available money and the quality of the bone for selection. An interesting one is that the central grave of the round monument is the oldest one, going around 1400, but sitting already still in the middle Bronze Age. And then you have the main occupation phase starting around 1100, a bit earlier covering mostly of it uh, the late Bronze Age. And this cemetery stops, uh, seems to stop also according to the pottery that we have in the late Bronze Age. This is one uh, another to show the variety, Kontig, the barrows, the grave that we have selected here. And then we have 90, 49 cremations. We could date 18 of them. But most of them are earth graves, and the urns were fit in, in a kind of in a typology you can use for the early Iron Age. And here again, the same pattern. It's a cemetery that really starts at the final phase in the in the ninth century BC, at the final phase of the late Bronze Age. It starts, stays in use until we have again this house plateau, but mostly early in the carbon age. According to my radiocarbon. Uh, colleague, we have a problem with modeling here. That we are the modeling is pushing us too far away from the real radiocarbon dates. And then again, the surprise, but it was not a surprise anymore because we can see these earthfield cemeteries suddenly some sometimes they are reused by a few graves in the early Iron Age, in the late Iron Age. It's something that is still have it's not much, it's only one, two, three graves that are appearing into into these cemeteries. In your mated remains, only in the balloon part, in the case, there we have some problems with the interpretation. You have a place here called Saint Saint, and that is an old excavation, but according to the document, and you're quite sure this is a cemetery with inhumation, and you have an animation phase going back to the, the final phase of the late Bronze Age, around 1500, 1400, but you have also uh, a late Bronze Age animation still. In this case, also less is only one date. It's a bit complicated. It can be a it can be an inhumation, but this cave has also a ritual function. And then the two last one, Kuvam, Kuvam, <coughs> are skulls that have been dated, and they are they must be ritual. So we cannot talk that they are real burial sites. But these are the only dates we have for inhumated, non-cremated remains. To conclude. When we're going the transition, like in Southern Europe, from inhumation to cremation, we have a lack of proper information. The bones that are preserved seem to be mostly associated with ritual contexts, except for San Saint, where we are quite sure. We have already one example of cremation in the Beaker period. The barrows, we have a limited C14, but when we see old excavations and information from the Netherlands, 
it seems already that at that moment from the barrel period in the middle ground is cremation becomes dominant. The transfer you're moving to the urn in flat graves, they appear already in the 16th, 15th century BC. There's a few centuries old and accepted. From uncalibrated 2900 feet, they're really dominant. You see it also in your radio carbon date site. We have different sites at the same period, and then you have the so-called earth fleet, earth fleet like Jacobo presented. We use mostly now the concept of the group Rhin, Suisse, France, Rantel. It's a separate group in uh, Eastern France, Switzerland, and Germany. And I collected the dates we have on used on the objects associated with them. When you see the sum of this is with 1200, 800, and this is a bit younger than when we have these earth fleet flat face appearing. <coughs> Thank you for your attention.